A lot of people out there who've wanted to switch to Intel's 12th gen platform have kind of been holding off because of the cost of the Z690 boards. They're very, very expensive. But this year at CES 2022, I can't believe it's 2022 already. Where did the last two years go? Anyway, Intel is announcing the B660 chipset that is more budget focused and more accessible. And today we're checking out our first B660 board. It's the MSI MAG B660 Mortar Wi-Fi DDR4. Wow, that's an absolute mouthful. But let's do our usual thing and take a bit of a closer look at this new board from MSI. But please remember, ladies and gents, with these videos, these videos are not reviews. They're just overviews so we can take a look at all the stuff on these boards and everything that comes in the box. But as you're about to find out, this B660 board is looking pretty feature packed. So let's jump in and take a look. All right, ladies and gents, here it is, the MSI MAG B660M Mortar Wi-Fi DDR4. But let's do our usual thing and get the motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a closer look at all of the things that come in the box with this brand new motherboard. All right, come on, mate, get it out of the way. What do we got? First up, we've got the antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi 6, not Wi-Fi 6E. And it is nice to see an MATX board with built-in Wi-Fi. Next up, we've got SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. There's two cables here in total. Then we've got a set of tools. Now there's a flat head and a Phillips head screwdriver, kind of like a keyring. You can use it as a weapon or to build your PC if that's what you wanted to do. There's also this MSI sticker. Now I've talked about this many times in the past, but what this does is it gives your computer extra performance for free. Not really, but some people believe it. There's also this round circular plastic device that for some reason is included in the box and not a USB stick like the last couple MSI boards. You were the chosen ones, MSI. There's also a bunch of pamphlets and stickers and whatnot so you can put a sticker on the battery on your motherboard or on the actual IO cover as well. There's also a quick installation guide. Now this will walk you through how to install the stock coolers for the new 12th gen non KSQ CPUs and how to socket a CPU in general. Nice and handy. There's also the user guide. Now the user guide typically shows you what everything is on the board, as you can see in this example. It's got everything labeled and how to change some stuff in the BIOS and how to get up and running. And last but not least is something that was hiding in the box that I didn't see until after. It's got these new M.2 clamps that we saw with the Z690 boards as well. So you don't need to use screws, but Let's unsheath the B660M Mortar Wi-Fi DDR4 and take a bit of a closer look at all of the things on the board. You ready? Let's jump in. First off, we've got the front panel audio header. There's a four pin 12 volt RGB header. There's a PWM fan connector. There's a Thunderbolt header, which requires an add-in card. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. There's two USB 2.0 headers for stuff like AIOs and RGB controls and whatnot. Two SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. A TPM header, which you do not need to use because TPM is built into the CPU. And the front panel header for all your lights and all your switches to let you know that your system is up and running. There's four more SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. A USB 3.2 front panel header. A USB type C front panel header. A 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new motherboard. There's also an LED postcode around array for diagnosing your system and another PWM fan header. And next to that, on the top of the board, there's another PWM fan header for the CPU fan, another three pin five volt addressable RGB header. And if we scoot on by to the other side of the board, you'll see that there's two eight pin EPS power connectors for the CPU. There's another sneaky PWM fan header above the top M.2 heatsink as well. In terms of PCIe slot configuration, there is a full by 16 PCIe Gen 4 slot at the top. That's the one with the silver shroud. There's also a PCI by one slot and a PCIe Gen 3 by four slot down the bottom, which is by 16 size. Now this features Intel's brand new B660 chipset, which is kind of more of a budget focused chipset. It's got a 
big heatsink on it to cool the chipset. There's also a 12 plus 1 plus 1 phase digital VRM setup, and you can see that the heatsinks for this VRM setup is quite substantial. You'll also notice that the entire I.O. cover is also a heatsink for that VRM layout. Because this is a B660 board, it features Intel's LGA1700 socket, which is compatible with all Intel 12th gen CPUs. And we'll take a bit of a closer look at the socket. Uh, if you've seen any Z690 boards, you'll know that this is identical in every single way. There is nothing different with the physical socket. If we flip the board over, you can take a bit of a look at what's on the back here. Not a lot of interesting stuff going on here. It does have labels for the keep out zones for this board as well. This is handy for people who've not built PCs before and people who have built lots of PCs before. In terms of memory configuration for this motherboard, it supports up to 128 gigs of DDR4 memory at 4800 mega transfers overclocked. Let's take the heat sinks off the two M.2 slots on this board so we can take a little bit of a closer look at those. Now both of these M.2 slots on this board are PCIe Gen 4 M.2 slots. You heard that right, you can get some fast storage on both slots on this board. And you'll notice that much like other boards that we've checked out in the past, they have labels that tell you where each slot is physically connected. This one is connected into the chipset. In terms of rear I.O., you've got four USB 2.0 ports, a DisplayPort 1.4 port. Yes, it supports DisplayPort 1.4. An HDMI 2.1 port. You will need a CPU with integrated graphics to use both the DisplayPort and HDMI. There's three USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabit type A ports. There's a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 20 gig type C port. There's 2.5 gigabit ethernet, the antenna connectors for the built-in Wi-Fi 6, and 7.1 digital surround sound with optical and SPDIF output with an integrated IO shield. Ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of the MSI B660M Mortar Wi-Fi DDR4. That is an absolute mouthful. Now, if you're interested in the DDR5 version of this board, just as a bit of a note, they do actually have a DDR5 version of the board. Now, the main difference that I can tell between the DDR4 and DDR5 versions of this board in particular is the DDR5 version has all black heat sinks and the DDR4 version is all silver. And if I'm being absolutely honest, I kind of prefer the all silver one. So yeah, that's, that's just my opinion. Now, the reason why we covered this B660 board first, straight off the bat, is because the next build we're gonna be doing is an MATX build. And we haven't done MATX stuff in such a long time. And to be honest, there hasn't been many MATX cases that have come out that have been interesting enough, but that's all about to change over the period of CES. So yeah, next build is with this board right here. But I, I do hope you guys enjoyed this because I, I personally think that if you look at the feature set of this board compared to many other MATX boards that we've seen, this is pretty feature packed. This board in particular is a board that I can see myself using for a permanent system if I was building something MATX. So it does look quite promising from the get go, but take all of that with a grain of salt because I haven't even powered this thing up yet. We'll get around to all of that when we do the build with this later in the week. So make sure you're subscribed with all the notifications turned on and hit the like button, all the stuff that YouTube is telling you to do to see that video when it drops because it will be coming very, very soon. As far as pricing and availability for this board and B660, 
At the time of filming, I think it's supposed to be towards the mid to end of this month, which is at the time of filming January 2022. In terms of pricing, I actually have no idea about any pricing for any B660 boards whatsoever. I did try and find out what the pricing would be, but at the time of filming this video, basically all of the companies are on holiday, which means vacation if you're from America or anywhere else in the world that uses vacation instead of the word holiday. We say holiday here. So they're not here. So I can't get any of the pricing. It's a bit unfortunate because CES kind of lines up with when all the companies are going back to work. So, I mean, unfortunate, but it is what it is. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to see more videos like this and all of our awesome builds we've got planned for this year. And make sure you like the video if you like the video. Wow, I've said to subscribe and like twice in this video so far. I don't usually do that, but you know, new year, new me, yeah. <laughs> and if you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available by clicking that join button or on float plane. You can get early access to stuff over there too. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. Thanks so very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. How do I, how do I end videos, Claire? Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. I totally forgot. <laughs>